morning, Sugar Cube. Good morning. How wow. Are, wow. <laughs> it's been a morning. It oh has been God. a morning. <laughs> you guys, I was so tempted to just stop my alarm and be like, I am laying in bed all day. Like, I would have gotten up to record, but otherwise I was like, hmm. Nothing. Yeah, I was like, I heard you get in the shower, and then, like, based on what time it was, I was like, oh, she's having a morning. Yeah, guys, it was 8.30, and I needed to be sitting down by 9. <laughs> yeah, that's what time we try to start recording. Now, we're normally pretty good about getting it in around that time. Yeah. But. Last week, I came in at 9.02. This week, I warned you at 9.01 that I was still needing well, to put on lotion <laughs> Guys, I'm sitting in a robe, like... <laughs> you were sitting in a robe last week, just because. <laughs> no, I was running behind last week, too. Oh, I just thought you wanted to be comfy. No, but I... That's a fair assumption. I love sitting around in my robe. Yeah, no, that's fair. I I was feeling kind of slow this morning. I got about seven, and I was like, oh my god, we record in two hours. <laughs> and I was, like, freaking out. And yeah. then I took a while in the shower, so it's like... It was 7.40, I think, when I got out. I was like, oh, my God, Lacey's about to be in here. I feel like I (gasps) was, like, being slow. No, no, no. You are good. One of the things is that whenever I'm in the garage, because, guys, sometimes I go in there to work out in the mornings, and when I'm in there, I can hear if someone's showering because the thing will go on, and then it will go off. And I, it was still on for so long, and I was like, oh, my God, she's still showering. I yeah. support it, though. You were vibing, and I respect it. I was vibing. I just needed some time. <laughs> yeah, when Cross was leaving our house this morning, he heard your music, and he did a little dance, and I was like, aww. <laughs> yeah, so we've been on, like, a lover kick, yeah. like, Lover by Taylor Swift, you guys. Like, we've both been vibing, and it's so funny because we didn't talk about it. Like, Lacey was just playing it the other morning Mm -hmm. while I was, like, while she was in the shower and I was getting ready. And I was, like, I literally, when I first heard it, I was about to hit play on it, like, shuffle. And then skip the ones I don't like, obviously. Well, and it's weird to me, too, because usually in the fall I'm in a red mood or folklore. Well, this year I really embraced folklore because we didn't have it. I mean, we had it last year at this time, but, like, still, it was really new. But lately, I've been like, lover. Yeah, I actually have not listened to Folklore. For me, I feel like Folklore is more wintry, but that's just me. That's fair. I feel like Evermore is the wintry one. I, I connect the two. That's, so. that's also fair. That's Maybe, though, we're so into lover because of The Bachelor. But maybe. maybe we're also into red because there's some bachelor tea. There is some bachelor tea. We got some unsweet tea and we got, I don't know if we have sweet tea. I was going to ask you because you said this is what you wanted to do. And I was like, I hope she's got something sweet because okay, I have something I'll like. Um, something out. Oh, I know something I could talk I about. I know something small that I don't necessarily care about too much, but some people might. Okay, so. let's let's dive let's talk into about the, the big unsweet. one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. So, yeah, two, two days, days ago, ago, I'm in the library doing I, homework. I was in class, you guys, when this happened. <laughs> <laughs> I get on Instagram. My mouth drops in the middle of the library behind my mask. It just drops. Katie and Blake broke up. Devastated. Devastated. I. Okay. I have feelings on this, though. I also have feelings. Okay. I have, like, three things. For one, I thought they would last at least a year. Yeah, I agree. Two, I am so tired of the tweets. I'm done. Being like, oh, it's, like, gonna get on Michelle season now. I have not seen a single one like that. I did, I thought you meant something else. I have been seeing all of these tweets where it's been like how Katie like said she didn't settle and then like bringing up Greg for yep, no reason. Yep, yep, yep. He's yeah. <laughs> irrelevant. No. Okay. There was one tweet and I almost quoted it because I was just genuinely so pissed. 
let me pull up my draft. Um, so someone tweeted and they were like, justice for Greg. And I said, justice for a man who manipulated and gaslit Katie on screen in front of millions? Yeah. Okay. Y'all only like him because he's conventionally attractive. Go off, I guess. Literally. I, I don't even think he's conventionally attractive. I don't no. find him attractive. He reminds me of Stuart Little now. Oh. I feel like if you ever dated him, like, okay, so hear me out. If you dated him and then you broke up with him, it'd be one of those situations where all your friends were like, you need to upgrade. Like, he was not that cute anyway. Like, they they think he's cute until, like, you get with him and then he's not cute anymore. So, basically, my past two exes. (laughs) Basically, every ex any woman has ever had. (laughs) Any woman. That's... That's Almost any, at least. There Besides are... Blake, though. I love Blake. Also, what I wanted to say was, first, I did... I don't want to talk too much about it because I do want to respect their privacy, and I know I've mentioned that to you, but I thought it was interesting that they posted the same caption mm-hmm. on Instagram to share the news. Also, though, I think it actually ended on good terms because we've seen Katie blow up on men when it ended badly and she didn't do that, at least not publicly. And Katie wouldn't be afraid to do it publicly, I don't think. Yeah, I will say in regards to the caption that I feel like they've probably seen how other couples have broken up with different ones and like how people can use the words no matter what they say against each other. So they were probably like, just do the same one. Yeah, it's probably just easier because then people would start comparing what they said and blaming people based off what they said. But if they post the same thing, there's no way to really tell what happened. And I don't think breakups necessarily have to be one person's fault or the other. And we really just don't know. And I just mm-hmm. want to say, everyone's like, two months after like the end of the season... Like, they were together before that. Like, you know, like, does do yeah. people realize that the show's pre-recorded? Yeah. And also, you, you're you in the Bachelor bubble. You don't really realize how it's going to be until you're out of it. So, I don't know why people are, like, pissed at them for it. Exactly. And my thing yeah. is... Oh, you, you go. And then I'll say what I have to I say. I was just going to say, too, like... It, so no one really liked them together like we were an unpopular opinion for liking them so it's like why are y'all mad you yeah. didn't like them anyways yeah i i completely agree what was i about to say um oh the only reason anyone is saying anything about it is because they're a bachelor couple mm-hmm. and my thing is People break up all the time. Things don't work out all the time. Imagine that being your relationship on full blast across the internet just because you guys didn't think you were compatible partners anymore. And I'm just going based off of exactly what they said. I'm not going to make any other assumptions. Yeah. And also, like, I know for me, like, when I was with Cross for a month, it felt, like, so long. So it's, like... They were together, like, probably, like, five or six months. It's going to feel like a while. And my thing is, too, they knew it was going to have to be a public breakup. And they already knew how people felt about them based off of the internet. And I just think that Kate is the type of person to not be able to not look. um, Mm -hmm. Because she does engage a lot. I also feel like some of that might have been hard on their relationship i i do too i think it could have been frustrating and hard for them to deal with um but i think that just shows how hard the breakup really was because they knew they were gonna get like it was gonna put more heat on the relationship when things finally cooled down because michelle season was starting Mm -hmm. i mean while everyone is still attacking katie because she's not like michelle well guess what michelle canceled a cocktail party too everyone calm down i love michelle i love katie but like we have to stop comparing them i got it's a shit to say about that (laughs) yeah we will get into that we will on a lighter note some sweet tea I don't really have anything besides the fact that Joe and Serena weren't able to be together on her birthday, so he took her out, like, every night for a week. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I love that. Um, I have something that, I don't know, I love Joe and Serena, so this isn't as important, but this is kind of funny tea. 
Um, did you see Tia's TikTok? <gasps> With her boyfriend? Yeah, and she's yeah. like, my boyfriend has to watch me talk about my China pot <laughs> yeah. on TV. So T has a boyfriend. I looked him up. His name's Taylor. I can't find that he was ever, like, on reality shows or mm-hmm. anything, but he does have, like, over 20K followers on Instagram. He's probably a model. Well, it said, I think he was from California and then moved to Nashville. Maybe a singer. Maybe. He gave me, like, frat boy vibes, which yeah, makes sense for... Yeah, he But it makes, makes sense. sense for Tia. No, and he posts about them so much, and also Aaron liked her most recent one, which was, like, the first picture with him, and I was like, hmm. Remember how I was saying Aaron always likes her stuff, but <gasps> Tia doesn't like his? Yeah. Maybe it's because she got in a relationship, like, right after Paradise. Oh, damn. I love Tia. Um, anyway. <laughs> anyway, shall we dive into the episode? Should we take a caffeine break <gasps> first? Yes. Oh my goodness. I was thinking about that a little bit ago and then I kind of forgot. So No, we have to. It's the sound of glory. Yeah. Well. On the last episode, I had a bottle of Coke, right? And I was like, way too self-conscious about having to open the bottle every time I wanted a drink and I could hear it and I was like I always get self-conscious about how it sounds when I like swallow a sip yeah I know I heard one of mine last time I'm like I'm disgusted I was like I'm disgusted you guys disgusted absolutely disgusted Mm. oh my god i haven't watched the harry potter movies and i'm so sad well i'm really hoping after cross and i finished twilight that we can dive into harry potter i wanted to get it done by halloween but i'm like harry potter also gives me christmas vibes yeah they don't they have a lot of christmas stuff i think like um through like the very no the like the end of december is like okay yeah. Like, you, I watch it year-round, but, like, when you, like, go through binging, like, watching them all. Yeah. Th- there is this menace of a squirrel yeah, a that is way. always yeah. in our backyard. And squirrels don't like me, you guys. I don't know what I did, but when I came to college, squirrels started hating me, and this squirrel taunts us. <laughs> and it really upsets me, you guys. God. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's get into the episode. Yeah. Let's get into the episode. So, episode two. Two for Michelle's season. We start off with a group date, mm-hmm. children edition. There are actually children on this date. Um, but I don't know who's more childish, the children or the men. I know. I thought you were going to call someone out specifically and we were going to have to argue already. I have a feeling, though, there's going to be some things that we highly agree on and yeah. Okay, so let's just get the elephant in the room out of the way. Let's talk about Peter and Will and their situation. <sighs> okay. I will say, I do think Peter was over dramatic. He does give me Aaron vibes, but I don't, maybe it's just because it's really fresh, but so far I don't really care for him that much. However,. That doesn't mean I'm team Will, because honestly, Will annoys the fuck out of me. Okay, so we're in agreement. Like, completely. God, I was so worried. No, if we did not agree on this, I was going to be so mad. I cannot with Twitter. I'm so annoyed. No, I normally am, like, getting a kick out of Twitter, but, like, it was making me fuming. (gasps) Yes, that's one thing I noticed. I didn't get on Twitter that much during the episode yesterday, actually, but, um... Normally when I it, did, I didn't agree with a lot of what people were saying. I know. So we're not going to agree with a lot of people for yeah. probably this season, to be honest. And normally, like, we get so excited to check Twitter during commercials. Yeah. Like, that's the only thing that we've enjoyed about, like, watching it live is that, mm-hmm. one, we don't have to avoid social media for spoilers. And two, like, we get to see the tweets come in live, you yeah, know? Yeah, so you can see more. Yeah, but no, as far as Peter and Will go, I completely agree. Um, Peter was kind of, I wouldn't go as far to say Peter was being a narcissist. People like to talk about themselves. And on group dates, you kind of do have to stand out. And I just think he was doing that. And um, Will's little Leo ego was getting a little hurt. So mm-hmm. I think it's so funny that a Leo and an Aquarius were arguing because it was like watching oh my, my sun and moon on the screen. 
That's true. And it's interesting to note that Peter is an Aquarius and Aaron was an Aquarius moon. So, I, similar vibes. I can respect that you want to compare him to Aaron, but he is not my king. He gives me, like, Walmart Aaron vibes. You know? <sighs> Whereas, like, Aaron is whatever you find. See, I think they're... Target. I think they're both, like, outspoken and, like, very loud about how they feel in their opinions. And thinking back to how he Peter pulled Will aside, I can kind of see what you mean about Aaron. Mm-hmm. But besides that, I don't really see it. Um, That's fair. Yeah, but, like, I see it in the confrontational, like, if someone's bothering you, he's going to say something. Some Aaron does the, the same thing. he says, I'm like... I'm like, you're, you're giving me Aaron energy, at least. Um, but yeah, I don't care for either of them that much. Me either. Um, I'm not surprised they're still around. The producers weren't going to get rid of the, all the drama, like, immediately. Yeah. Well, and I think for me, like, you heard me the when it, they started arguing, and I was like, I'm so done already. Like, I, it's just, like, it's episode two, and I know drama usually does start pretty quick, but I guess this just felt so stupid that I just... I was more annoyed than entertained. My thing is, though, and I feel like no one is... I don't even think you'll agree with me. I don't think it was necessary for Will to write Peter's name when asked to spell narcissist. I just, no, I agree. Okay. I just, like, feel like it was unnecessary. And, like, while, like, Peter may have came across that way, who really started it? Yeah. But just because Peter is going to be outspoken. Here, mm-hmm. My thing, Will just seems like he is entitled, wants to be the center of attention, and... Wants to, like, kind of, like, be above the other men and be like, oh, ha. I agree because, okay, so we see Peter multiple times talk about how he feels like he has a really strong connection with Michelle. And while we can see that he does not have the strongest or even close to the strongest, like, we can see that, but he doesn't know that. And so in his mind, he's just trying to make himself stand out. He already has a connection with Michelle. He wants to be Mm -hmm. seen by her. We have not seen Will, and it could have been editing, we have not seen Will talk about how, like, he, how he feels about his connection with yeah. Michelle, so I think he's bored. Yeah, and also I'm like, Will's targeting Peter for trying to stand out, but I'm like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's literally, like, the beginning of the show. Of course he's going to want to stand out. Also, like, why is it wrong to want to stand out? Why is it wrong to try for a woman? Exactly. Like, that's literally what she is asking you guys to do. And on the early group dates, it's so important because you've you've only had so little time with her already. Yeah. And also, um, Michelle's, like, like, some women I could see, like, the guys doing, like, really tiny things. And they're like, oh, my God. And, like, obsessed. But Michelle, I feel like you really do have to prove yourself to her. I think we saw a lot of that this episode, which we'll get into. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I just feel like... It was just stupid drama. It is. But I think it's, like, a nice opener to the deeper drama that we started seeing this episode. Mm -hmm. So it gives us a little bit of petty drama to, like, kind of balance out the like kind of more intense drama yeah this is a drama we're gonna look back on and like flashbacks and be like oh i forgot that happened it's kind of like demi drama oh my god when you're at the end of the season and you're like that was on this season exactly like you forget that they were there they're gonna be here a couple more weeks um okay but that's like it um for those who watched Peter season, this is giving me like Champagne Gate vibes in the sense that like it's drama early on and then we're gonna just forget about it and next thing you know they're gonna be like BFFs. However, I don't care for either of them, so I don't really care. 
Yeah, I just feel like there's not even really, like, a side. I know that Twitter does not agree with me. I... I I don't know how I'm gonna keep checking Twitter if this is what it's like. And I love it. Like, I recently got into it, you know, because I've been trying because I don't really... I'm not too savvy in Twitter. I mean, on other stuff, I'm fine. But I just didn't get into it when I was younger. So it was... It's kind of just like my bachelor, like, tea, like... The yeah. f- I want to find the funny stuff. There was some funny stuff, but, like, people who were, like, us were the minority, like, mm-hmm. with this opinion, and they didn't have a lot of likes. Yeah. And it's, I didn't even click on the comments. I didn't want to yeah. see the comments. I know, because so many times I just want to be like, no, no, no. And then I'm like, no, because I'm also a non-confrontational person, so I'm not going to deal with that before bed. I'm confrontational. I don't think there's any hiding that. I just think on the internet, it's not worth it. Yeah, I agree. If I was talking to my best friend, if I was talking to Mandy about this, and for whatever reason she disagreed, it doesn't normally happen with Bachelor, I'd have to have a serious conversation with her, but like I wouldn't like try to like yell at her or be rude or anything I just don't see what that does like it doesn't help anything yeah that's why like with us even on the podcast at least we can just sit and talk about it even if we disagree also the thing is so while I don't understand how so many people disagree with us and how we are the minority I'm not saying that they're not allowed to feel that way. They can have whatever opinion. They definitely could come across that way. It just Mm -hmm. depends on what kind of person you are and how you think about it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, like, becoming, like, a gang mentality, mentality, and that's my problem with it. Yeah. And you're so attacked if you disagree. Yeah. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Neither of these men are ending up with Michelle. I don't think we've seen previews of either of them having one-on-ones, so they will not yeah. be around long. If anything, they're just going to show up on Paradise. Oh my god, I would love for both of them. I was actually thinking, before we move on from talking about Paradise, just real quick, I was like, you know what my saving grace is? The fact that Greg would never agree to go on Paradise, because he already could have whoever, like, half of Bachelor Nation, more than half, that like would want him. Yeah. And he wouldn't feel the need to go on Paradise. And because he barely got off, like, without everyone hating him, there's no way he'd go back on. And, I mean, lately he's been hanging around college girls, so it seems like that's Yeah, his he was out of college, like, only a couple hours from my hometown, and I think that's so, like, disgusting. Like, they're so impressed. Like, we're so impressionable. Like, I'm not trying to say, like, oh, women in college, like, don't know how to make their own decisions. But, like, when you see someone on TV, it's hard for us to not, yeah. you know? Like, and I'm not even saying, like, other people, like, it, like if I was single, me, che- not Greg, but, like. If- I saw Blake from Becca's season. <laughs> oh, my God, no. Die. I didn't even watch it. No. Mm. Like, so I'm not even, like, talking shit about anyone. I'm just saying, like. We're still young. Our minds are still developing. And I don't know. It just, like, rubs me the wrong way. It's frustrating. Um, yeah. So, did you... Any other things on the date? I realized my notes that I wrote Casey down as Chris. <laughs> um, not because he looks like Chris G or Chris S, but because he looks like Chris Randone. Um, yeah, neither. But I, I wrote that he is just as creepy as Rick. However, I do have other thoughts on Rick. <laughs> okay, do you want to talk about them? or like? Yeah, I don't... I'll talk about it. Okay, is it from the date? Kind of Rick in general. Okay. Um... But I wrote him down specifically, like, during the date. Okay. Um, I think he'll go far. Oh, yeah. Like I uh, said. That's, I was really picking up on that this episode, which made me sad because I was like, damn, I wish I would have had him in my top three. But I think he'll go far. And also, I don't know if maybe I'm the weird one, but he wasn't as creepy in this episode. If anything, I found him more, like, I could see... Kind of playing devil's advocate here. I could see that maybe last week he was just kind of uncomfortable and shy. And now that he's getting to be around Michelle more, he gets to come out of his shell. And 
Don't get me wrong, I can see how people think he's creepy, but I will say, he does have a very cute smile. No. <laughs> okay, I am okay with you feeling that way, and I'm trying to be better. Not that I love him, believe me. No, 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 I didn't get that. You would have just said that if that's how you felt. My thing is, one, I feel like he came across as a little less creepy because he had less screen time. He didn't get that much screen time. He got quite a bit, don't get me wrong, like definitely more than some of the other people that are even still here. Yeah. But I think he was creepy in a new way for me. Um, specifically, like, when he, like, didn't he start crying or am I confusing him with someone? I didn't write it down. Um, it was during the cocktail party. I don't remember any man crying. <laughs> or someone seemed like they were about to start crying. I really think it was Rick. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. But, like, I don't know. It just... Oh, wait. No, it might not have been him. Some I wrote down that someone gave me... the. Oh, it was Martin almost crying at one point, Ooh. and he gave me a really big ick because of that. Lance. Oh, my God. Never mind. But regardless, <laughs> Rick is just, like, creepy to me, and I just, I don't know. You know how I am with my gut feelings. Yeah, that's completely fair. Again, kind of playing devil's advocate. Maybe I'm just being hopeful because I'm, like, hoping that he was just shy and that's why he came off weird. I don't know. For Michelle's sake, I actually hope you're right. Because I have yeah. him in my top five, <gasps> if not in top three. Like, and she was vibing on him. Oh, my God. They have chemistry. Can't, I'm so disgusted with, with that. It wasn't even a Mad Lib. I know everyone's saying it's a Mad Lib, but it was a fill-in-the-blank um, worksheet. Which I think is actually I'm, more so what it was, because she's a teacher. So that would make more sense to me than a Mad Lib. Yeah, I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion or not, but I'm over all the, like, teacher shit. I hate when they take, like, their career and, like, overdo it. It's like... I feel like it's actually kind of insulting. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but I feel like if I was on this show and I was a bachelorette and it was just made all about my career, I was like, okay, but what do you know about me? Yeah. And I also kind of feel like it's a little gross sometimes because a lot of times these men, maybe I'm just being dramatic, but a lot of times the, the men are insinuating these relationships between you know, a teacher and a student and, like, I, I all funding game, whatever. But, like, I don't know. Sometimes it just comes across weird to me and I'm like, mm, I don't know. I agree. I just don't care for it. I agree. I don't want it to come across like, that's okay. Um, Nobody should be with their teacher. Then you had me last week, and I'm like, yes, Clayton, bring out the stick. <laughs> oh, no, I still think that was great. I But here's the thing, like, I just feel like that was it, and we have not heard anything else from him about mm-hmm. that. And I think going in, the teacher gimmick isn't too bad because it's your limo entrance. Like, you kind of have to do something to stand out. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. But anything beyond that, I'm uncomfy. I'm also uncomfy with more food. Oh my god. Why? Why? It's just so unnecessary. Like, why is it every episode? Yeah. And then, um, one other thing about Rick that I forgot to mention is how he was like, he said something along the lines like, it's been so long since I felt like that, and... That's a red flag for me because it's so early and you're saying shit like that. I'm I would concerned. I would give it a pass if he was on the one on one date and like said that and mm-hmm. like after an amazing day, like wow I When can't... you're on that high. Yeah. No, he was on a group date. Oh, he was on the he Yeah, was he was on the fill first in the one. blank worksheet with her. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but I wanna talk about somebody else on this first date. <sighs> Because you guys, Brandon got so much screen time this episode. And as if you don't remember, that was the guy I thought Michelle might end up with. So he got a lot of screen time. They had really playful, like, energy. They have good chemistry. They have such good chemistry. Uh, I... I don't like him. <laughs> what? Something about him rubs me the wrong way. I don't know if it's because 
he feels too young to me or because the way he was talking just came across as like annoying and like cheesy to me. Okay, okay. I just would like to clarify, I would not date someone like Brandon. Oh no, you would not. I would you never. Would never. <laughs> I would never. Okay, just so we're clear. I just like there is something about his and Michelle's energy that I kind of just like and I feel like them together makes how he acts more tolerable for me. He gives me the ick. Oh my god. I just something about him. I don't like him. And okay. I do understand, like, their fun, playful relationship. That's cute. Like, they have chemistry. I just, I'm not into it. I'm not into it. I respectfully disagree. I don't like Corny. That's not his name. Shit, I don't like Brandon. He just looks like Corny to me. (laughs) I don't like them either. Or, well, I don't like Courtney either, but we're talking about Brandon. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) yeah. Well, Um, okay, but he was my pick, and he got the date rose, so I am taking this as a win for me. Also, during that date, Romeo was also another person to say that he hadn't felt like that. I don't think Michelle seemed interested in him. I wouldn't be. No, he was boring to me. He's so boring. And I don't, I can't remember what his voice sounds like, but it sounds like annoying. (laughs) It does. (laughs) He's a cancer. Of course he is. Oh. The energy. Wow. Um, But during this date, they do a flash, like a, they go back to the house, um, like the cameras do. And we see at the house while the other guys are out on the date, the other guys at home are waiting to see who gets the first one-on-one. And the first one-on-one goes to Jamie. Which was, if you guys listened to our first episode, you would know that I picked him to be in Michelle's final three as a prediction. I, yeah, he was second or third on yours. He wasn't in mine. He was third on mine. So, Jamie was, was her pick that wasn't in my top three, and Brandon was my pick that wasn't in her top three, and they both did really well this episode. I got shit to say, though. But Are we, um, are we getting into Jamie now? You know, we might as well. Yeah. Before I mean, we do, I do want to say, because um, we already talked about Peter, but I wanted to just say how mature Michelle was when she talked to Peter after he argued with Will. Like, I just really liked how she carried herself. He um, handled it well, too. He did. I, I do think so. Because um, that could have gone really Bad. Yeah, he didn't lie. He owned up to it. Um, he didn't get aggress- like passive aggressive with her. No, and he wasn't mad at anything she was saying. He was being very respectful to he her. He looks sweet. I'm looking at his photo and I'm like, Peter, you look sweet. You know what? What? How? We? I still feel the same way. Like I don't really care for either of them. But I think Will might just be one of those people for Peter that just pushes his buttons beyond belief. Because I don't see Peter really getting that upset with anyone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And not to keep comparing, this is the last time I will do it, but it's kind of like an Aaron and Thomas situation. Yeah. Let them know. Who's going to be Peter's James? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I'll have to see more of him interacting with the men. Yeah, we haven't seen him, like, buddy-buddy with anyone yet. I think it's too close to find his that. bro on Paradise. Yeah, to be fair... James and Aaron, we didn't get any of their screen time. No, like, I'm sure they were friends, oh, but yeah. it wasn't as intense. Yeah. Okay. But one on one date. Yeah. So they go to Joshua Tree and they're going to have a climbing date. Yeah, they climbed fun. up to a picnic. Yeah, I personally would not enjoy this because I would be scared shitless, and your girl does not like sweating. Yeah. What I will say is I was kind of getting annoyed with Michelle. Not because of it. Like, this is so minuscule, but I'm just kind of being nitpicky. Mm -hmm. How when they were on the picnic and talking, she kept mentioning, you're making this such a good first one-on-one. Like, stop reminding him you're going to have other ones. Like, it's just weird to me. Maybe it's just because I am... I'm always thinking men are trying to do the worst, but I'm like... Don't give him too much 
um, positive feedback because then he's going to take that and be like, hmm, she's so into me, you know, and, like, it's going to get in his head. Also, I just want to point out what you pointed out last night. Twitter did not like him at this point. Nope. Let's just keep nope. that in mind. When I, okay, guys, I got on Twitter before his date. People did not like him. They were not excited for him to have the one-on-one, um, but... After his one-on-one, surprise, everyone loves him. I wonder why. Just so we're clear, me and Lacey already liked him. Yes. We already liked him. So I had good vibes. I really did. Jamie was the one where I was like, oh, he's going to be like... um, Everyone's favorite. Well, I was like, he's going to be the sweet soul that she's going to let go after hometowns. Or after fantasy suites and it's gonna be such a terrible breakup um you guys I'm I'm freaking out as well yeah um before we get into why we were probably wrong I will say one it was kind of early for like um a concert date but every time they've had country music in a date like I don't like country music but typically they go far because didn't Blake and Katie mm-hmm. have the country music and then yeah. her other ones weren't country so yeah. and I don't know also another thing that I was thinking about on this date first of all he said I'll remember this for the rest of my life and I was like Last night, when I wrote it down, I was like, that's stupid. But now I'm kind of like, okay, that's fair, because if I was on the show and I had a date like that, I would probably remember it, too, because you're, like, on a TV show having this adrenaline date. So I kind of get that. Um, But I don't know. I also wrote down, am I becoming too skeptical? Because with every guy, I'm just like, I don't trust you. I think we've been Besides scarred. Besides one. There's one guy. But I'll get into that later. Yeah, you're going to have to tell me. I don't know how you're going to feel about it. But, yeah. So, also, Jamie, I heard him talk in the first episode. But this episode, I really, like, kept focusing on his voice. Because every time he talked, I was like, that voice should not be coming out of that man. I didn't notice that. I thought he would... He just looks like he would sound older and wiser. See, I felt like on the date, like when he was talking about what has happened in his life and his like mom and everything, I felt like, I even wrote this down, like this was before our minds kind of changed, but like he he seemed like he had really taken time to reflect on his life and figure himself out. And I was like, I love that. Like, Mm -hmm. I was so into it. Yeah, I will say, so... Going to the night portion. So, at first I was kind of like... I get frustrated when people always have to share some sad story because I'm like... I feel like they're just doing this to kind of get the... Whoever's the lead to feel this emotional attachment to them just because they went through a traumatic experience, but... After he told his story and said that, like, that's why he focuses so much now on love and um, those relationships, it made so much sense. And I fully respect him for bringing this up on that date, especially because you can tell it's something that really impacted his life for years because it's not like his mom's death was sudden because like it was sudden but also there was years of him being scared that it would happen yeah um I actually think like um I don't mind when they get like super emotional on -on one-on-ones um Mm -hmm. and I think it does kind of put him at a little bit of an advantage than everyone else because he got the first one-on-one. They definitely formed, like, a very deep connection Mm -hmm. and trust. And, like, they worked very well together, like, climbing. I was like, wow, they're, like, a good team. Oh, my God. I was so stressed at first because I was like, this man is going to look so dumb and she's going to show him up 
No. He was so great. He was directing her and like they notice it is important to note that when they were doing this, they weren't getting frustrated with each other. She was hearing him. She was letting him help her and not being like, oh, I got it. Or, oh, I thought you meant this way. And getting snappy. Like, they handled it really well. So, that's good. Yeah, I agree. So, it really showed that they can work out as a team. And then during the night portion, when they were, like, getting deep and emotional, they really showed each other. Or at least Michelle showed that she can like, support him emotionally, and I feel like he'd be able to do the same for her. Mm -hmm. Um, It was so hard to hear. My problems with Jamie have nothing to do with his relationship with Michelle. Agreed. Well, Well, um, that's a... mm. Okay, kind of. Up until that... Okay, let's just talk about it, because we're going to keep going around it, and it's going to be irritating to me. Yeah, so basically later in the episode... At the cocktail party. Yes, Jamie's spilling tea. He's um he tells Lance, well, he, Martin. <laughs> Martin, sorry guys. He tells Martin that, you know, back at home, he heard that from one of his friends that Michelle was out with this basketball player. And then um Jamie goes on to tell other people. And then Okay, and keep in mind, most of the guys aren't that worried about this. They're like, it's kind of just like hearsay. And then he goes to Michelle and he says like, you know, it's not a big deal, but I just like want to ask you about this. And then in his ITMs, he's saying like, oh, I need to ask her this because I don't know if I can trust her. But then to her face, he's pretty much saying the opposite. That's a red flag. No, I agree. No, I very much do. Um, I feel like because he did have that one-on-one and he made a connection that he thinks he can get away with this kind of stuff. And it's going to come back to bite him. It's going to come back to bite him. But I will say I do think he does really care about Michelle and was just getting insecure with the fact that Joe and her might also have a connection. That is very obvious to other people. Um... To the point where they thought that maybe they knew each other before. Mm -hmm. And I kind of think that... We'll talk about the second date and the group date in a minute. But I kind of feel like because, oh, he was MVP, got to go to the party after losing. Everyone was kind of like giving him an eye. And then he got the date rose. And I think it started to get into Jamie's head that this guy like was able to do what he did while not being on a Mm one-on-one and um all that so i will say um what i was thinking was i feel like um jamie's a scorpio we can't forget and having being dating a scorpio i kind of feel like i understand a little bit of how they think and i think when they feel like their relationship is threatened they act not necessarily out of character but they are a little over dramatic and um their words kind of start not going together and contradicting Mm -hmm. each other. Not to make excuses for him. I'm not trying to do that at all. See, I feel like he just did it to do it. And maybe that's just me trying to look for the good in people. (laughs) Yeah, maybe maybe it's it's me being skeptical. Like, I just feel like he did it to do it, and... It's also funny because I was really like, Jamie! (laughs) Now I'm like, no. Well, that's Um, the thing. That's what's fun about this is we don't agree. So I like, like, (laughs) it's so interesting how much we don't agree now that we don't talk that much during the episodes. Yeah, because we're not, like, swaying each other's opinions. And here's the thing. I feel like even talking like this, I don't feel like, not that you don't make good points, too, but I don't feel like my opinion changes. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from, but I yeah. still feel this way. Same. And I'm kind of like, who will be right? <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. Um, but I just, no, I'm, I'm really disappointed. Jamie just gives me bad energy. 
Um, I will say, though, man's had a very nice suit on. Hello. 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 Um, I said during the episode to everyone that it reminded me of Stefan from the Vampire Diaries. And y'all, Stefan is my favorite character ever. So, you know I was screaming on the inside. But I still don't like him. So. <sighs> I'm well, just kind of done talk. Like, I'm not, no, we're fine no. to continue. It's just like, oh my god, it really had. I do want to say though, like, you know, major love to him though for um everything he's learning gone how to love again after. Yeah, I just think that the show is not made for everyone, mm-hmm. but. He's he's gonna get views, and who knows? Maybe we'll get a redemption arc throughout the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I don't want to completely be like, oh my god, I hate him just based off of one thing. Um, yeah. Because mm-hmm. what I will say, I love Joe, and like I know you didn't love him. I don't remember how you said you feel now, but like I like Joe, even though like he ghosted Michelle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and. I was actually thinking this morning while low drying my hair, <laughs> I was like, you know what? Maybe I was right last week. I just had the wrong men. Maybe Jamie's the villain. Maybe. So, never know. But you know what? Since you mentioned Joe. Let's talk about the second group date. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about, well, first of all, so we cut back to the house and Joe gets a call that his basketball coach passed away. First of all. Very frustrating that we have to exploit the phone call that he received. I understand bringing it up, but they literally could have just had him bring it up in the ITMs. And yeah, say, they did not have to show it. It it just, ugh, it's one big invasion of privacy. Mm-hmm. It would have had the same effect, I and feel I, like. I know they sign a contract, but like, when did we sign humanity. Yeah, when did they sign away their Bill of Rights? Like, <laughs> yeah, damn, I'm like, what if I got like a really, tra- like, what if I'm on the show and I get a traumatic phone call and then when I'm watching back the season, it's like, there's me crying, you know, it's just, it was frustrating. Um, but, um, so we kind of hear even more that Joe, um, loves basketball and I think it could really show that it was helping him kind of feel better because he didn't seem as sad mm-hmm. on the actual date. And then at the after party, we could see how hurt he was. Mm-hmm. So I think that the basketball date, and especially sharing that with Michelle, I think that's going to yes. really strengthen their relationship. Yeah. So actually, one of the things, so when he pulls her aside later that evening and tells her, At first, I was like, damn, like, he's talking so fast. It's, like, so weird. And then I was like, Lacey, it's because this is, like, hard for him. It's hard for him to get the words out and be like, you know, this important person to me passed away. Like, it's such a sensitive subject. So it made sense after thinking about it. I was like, of course he was nervous. What? I was being hard on him. I agree. I feel like it was a combination of... Him having trouble in the past, maybe with opening up, because we kind of do see a little bit of that with him. If if we're assuming what he told Michelle is true and everything with George Floyd was really hard for him to talk to anyone and have a relationship with anyone, that maybe this is something he struggled with in the past. And also, it's a very sensitive topic. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, for me, I can kind of relate to this in the way that it's hard for me to really open up to someone, but once I do, I kind of just have to get it all out. And then, meanwhile, I'm trying not to, like, cry while doing it, you know? So I feel like that could have been what was happening yeah. with Joe. And grief is such a difficult feeling. Like, I personally believe that grief can be stronger than sadness, happiness. It is a very hard feeling to process, so... You yeah. know, I completely understand why he would um, feel so shaken up. It's so hard um, losing someone you love, especially in that setting where you're not at home. And we don't know, like, 
He might have not even seen his coach for years. We don't know how long it's been. And so that could also be really hard for him. Yeah. I heart, Like, love out to him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it was an emotional episode. I'm surprised how emotional things got week two. Yeah. But. And so on the group date when they're playing basketball, I thought it was important to note two things. First of all, um, Joe is a great player and like basketball player and he wasn't boastful about it. Clayton noticed. I loved it. (laughs) Yeah. Also unpopular opinion. Apparently hardly anyone likes Clayton, but we do. So, I mean, we haven't seen that much of it. No, this is why we're not getting that many views on these. People hear, (laughs) people hear our first opinion said, nah, these, these bitches ain't for me. Yeah. Like, you know what, Clayton? might be a little bit basic but we don't know anyways we haven't seen enough of him yet but like just initially i have no reason to not like him so like i just i don't know what the point is of okay i'm being so hypocritical because i'll I'll get a vibe from someone and not like them but i'm like if someone is just he just gives me such a neutral vibe so i'm like i like him until proven otherwise yeah he has fun energy i like it and he's one of those guys where i feel like Every time I look at him, he gets a little bit cuter. I think he is, like, textbook my my type. Like, oh, my God, yeah. He just needs to be shorter. Why? <laughs> <laughs> okay, can't, like, okay, I know I don't typically date very tall men. For all we know, he's probably, like, 6'7". If Nate is 6'8". Okay, I'm... and I will climb him like Rosalie climbed Emmett <laughs> in Twilight. <laughs> oh, my God. Remind me to tell you something after this. Oh, my God. You have in so... In regards to Twilight. You've said so many things like this in the past two days. So yeah, you're gonna two have... things. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway, um, we love Clayton. Yeah, the Sorry. Other thing... <laughs> That I was going to mention is that I think that um, for Michelle, it was very, I think she even said something along these lines, but it was very comforting for her to be into someone like Joe because he does have that familiarity. (laughs) They have a lot in common. With, especially with basketball and because like that was such a big part of her life so it's comforting that he also shares that and they grew up in minnesota minnesota and like i think okay so not that we're even should be talking about this yet because we are so far from like the end but family is so big for michelle and i can't imagine her wanting to move away from her parents mm-hmm. so i think it'd be very like i she, michelle's not gonna be one of those people moving to a big city to be in the bachelor crowd. She's just not, she does not have that energy. She has her life where she is. Mm -hmm. And I don't think she's going to want to uproot or move far. Yeah, I don't think Michelle's going to be one of the ones after the show that's like, do you want to try this new product? No, she is here for love. (laughs) Michelle is here for the right reasons, you guys. Mm -hmm. And speaking of right reasons... So I said earlier that I was skeptical about pretty much everyone besides one man. Okay. Oh, how the tables turn because I'm going to be honest, I really like Joe. Oh, okay. I really like Joe too. Thank God. When I heard you say a little bit ago that you liked him, I was like, yes. I was like, I was waiting for you to come back to it. And when you did, and I was a little hopeful, but mm-hmm. I didn't know who you were referring to. I like him. He... This episode, okay, last episode I could see, like, in my head I was like, he kind of seems a little bit arrogant. This episode I'm like, I see his more sensitive sweet side. You know who seemed a little arrogant to me this episode? Who? Nate. Ooh, I wasn't, okay, I do appreciate how he was not, like, um, caring about Michelle's relationships with other men and was solely focusing on himself props to you king i love to see it we don't see it often not be me no, no no like i would be constantly comparing myself and that's why I... except my thing is that i would be the person who would be comparing in my head yeah i wouldn't Excuse verbalize me. it yeah i wouldn't verbalize it that just seems other... insecure yeah and I feel like it, when you start to speak that stuff out into the world, then you're kind of, like, putting that energy Do out. you think that maybe in his head he's comparing, but then 
out yeah. loud. He's like being like, nah. He literally said, I'm not tripping. <laughs> and I thought yeah. it was so funny. I wrote it down. Like, I literally wrote, Nate is not tripping. <laughs> Nate quotes. is not tripping. <laughs> I um, thought it was so funny. But I, I think he came off like a certain way. We got some facial expressions I did not love from him yeah. this episode. I will say that he seems really into her. Yeah. But I don't know if I just feel that way because of their steamy makeout. Oh that my was... god, their physical chemistry off the charts. No, I forgot mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... I don't blame her. I don't blame him. Like hello. I don't blame him. Her she in looked that dress. <laughs> Which one? They were all Okay. Even so her outfit wore... at the beginning was so cute. Oh my god, I know, and her hair, oh, her little fabulous. Brain. Um, but so this episode though, she had one pink dress that was silk, and it it had two straps, like spaghetti straps, and then she had her night portion one, which was pink as well, and it had like the slits. Personally, I loved the strapped one, the spaghetti straps. So I loved didn't... the night one as well. But... Okay, I was like, did you not like her cocktail no, dress? I, I was like, it. I love them both. Honey, make that dress white and it will be my wedding dress. <laughs> like, How is she? Okay. Again, we were not, like, this was not a popular opinion. Everyone loved Michelle's, like, first night dress and we just did not like it. Why were we not seeing something more like this? I feel like it's so much yep. more Michelle. Maybe in, like, a more neutral color because I feel like neutral colors are more night one-esque. Mm-hmm. But, like, I love this. <sighs> I Her in a beige dress would be incredible what i'm surprised about is maybe i'm just remembering katie's season wrong but we were all, i always thought katie was gonna get so many colors and we're already seeing more colors with michelle i feel like but maybe i'm remembering katie's season wrong it was so long ago mm-hmm. my mind is a paradise blur not to compare them not to compare them at all it's just how but how yeah it's also really putting it into perspective this season how little they cared about katie um, but that's a conversation for a different day, so, <laughs> yeah, but that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, but yeah, she looked gorgeous, um, and even though he wasn't on the date, or, like, the winning team, Joe got the group date rose. Yeah, and I wrote down during this date that I think Joe and Michelle have the most chemistry out of everyone. Even Nate. And I think... The way, okay, I feel like she has really good chemistry with Nate and with Rick, and she has good chemistry with Brandon. Her chemistry with Joe feels very, like, it doesn't, okay, it doesn't just feel sexual or just, like, lighthearted. It feels very tender. I was going to say it feels, like, intimate, but not in, like, the sexual way. Yes. It feels very yes, intimate. I agree. It feels like that love that you do have with a partner it feels very safe oh shit you know i'm one for the safe (laughs) the same no no and i no i agree like i'm just now like experience that for like the first time in my life so Mm -hmm. like yeah i can see it when it happens to other people now yes um when i got with cross even before we were really together one of the things that i pretty much always said to you and Lauren was that he just made me feel safe and calm and I can see that with her and Joe yeah I agree I feel like I've always kind of felt safe with Jalen and like while we had our problems in the beginning I think it was both a self-sabotaging not anything actually wrong I think we were just self-sabotaging and And now we're younger yeah we were younger we were figuring stuff out we were figuring out what we wanted to do with our lives and we still are but now we're figuring it out together we're helping each other and so I don't know it's just like it makes me have a really big soft spot for Joe and Michelle and like Mm -hmm. I know he's not my topic and he's yours but I like I know this is early to say this I won't be mad like unless he like does some stuff the rest of the season I know I'm just like man please don't disappoint me also Michelle did tell everyone that night at the cocktail party after Jamie was just like spreading these rumors she did confront them in and say Joe and I 
did speak briefly, but he ghosted me after two messages, which is nothing to feel shameful about. I agree. Um, my only thing is she said quite a few years ago, and we know it was around the time of George Floyd's death, so I just felt like quite a few years ago is a little misleading, but, like, it's relative. That's, like, someone's opinion, what mm-hmm. quite a few years ago is. And also, I'm sure once you're, like, um, not in school and stuff, life feels, like, the years feel a little longer, I guess. Yeah. To be fair, I was thinking about it. I was like, okay, that happened in 2020. But in my head, I was like, that does feel like quite a few years ago, but technically it is wrong. Yeah, so that's just my only thing. I'm not being nitpicky. Regardless of when it was, it doesn't matter. She told them that the messages exist. She told him he ghosted her. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, here's my thing, though. So she tells them she confronts the men because... Jamie approaches her with this accusation and claiming, oh, I don't care. Yes, you do, but He's the only one that cares. That's the only thing I agreed with Twitter on, that he was the only one who cared. Yeah, literally when Jamie told Martin this originally, Martin was kind of looking at him like, okay. Oh my god. We really had a battle of the cancer. Or wait, no, he's a Scorpio. The battle of the water signs. And it was so funny to me. Martin looked really good in his glasses, by the way. He looked so much better in his glasses. He looked really cute. It made me wonder what he looks like when his hair isn't blonde. I'm not mad about the blonde. No, I'm not either. He can actually (laughs) pull it off. But if his hair wasn't blonde, maybe I would resist the urge to call him Lance all the time. Um... But Imagine him, like, with his natural hair color and a shaved face. Like, that would be so weird. He would be a different man. He would be a whole different man. His name's still Martin, though, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. I can't real. with that name. No. Um, and with his chain. And the fact that he's I'm not a mad about the ch- trainer, like, it mm. all just doesn't make sense to me. You know what? I'm not mad about the chain. I kind of like the chain. I like chains, but it takes certain men to pull it off. Yeah, I get that. That's fair. Like Nate, I'd be like, yeah, of course. Peter. Clayton could never. Oh my god, Clayton <laughs> could never. Could never. Spencer but you know what? Could. I would never want Clayton to. It would not it would not it look right. Sense. It wouldn't make sense for him. Yeah. But um so Michelle confronts all of the men about this accusation she clarifies everything and okay i was just a little confused because after she does this it's like she's expecting them to talk to her but i'm like i don't exactly know what you're expecting them to say you want them to out themselves and who said what yeah like was that what she was wanting was she wanting them to be like Oh, we understand you. We're sorry. I don't know. It just, I was very confused at what she wanted. So I don't blame them for not speaking up. Yeah. Thinking about it now, and I just now thought about this, but it very much so did give me um, when the teacher is yelling at the class because they're in trouble and no one says anything and they get frustrated Mm -hmm. that no one's saying anything. I'm like, I don't know. My thing is, too, with the same scenario, sorry, um, she mentioned, I want to talk more about this specifically, too, but she mentioned um, the bar that Jamie mentioned, her walking out with the basketball player, um, supposed basketball player, and how did Martin not immediately know who told her? And was mm-hmm. it was Jamie not the last one she talked to? How did no one put that well, together? Um, but did Martin say that he didn't know? Because for because I was like, oh, he probably knows. He's just not saying anything. No, they, they didn't really show him after that. But I'm just saying, how did he... I just... Maybe he just doesn't want to be more involved in the drama. So mm-hmm. he didn't want to be the one telling everyone. Yeah, I don't blame him because I wouldn't... For me, if I was Martin, I wouldn't tell the men. I would go to her directly privately to where it's not obvious that I'm, like, going and spilling tea. Um... But also, Jamie, why is this important now? Why didn't you bring it up when you met her or on your one-on-one hello? Exactly. 
He's a shitster. Yeah, and um, I don't remember if it was you or if it was Lauren or Laura last night, but someone mentioned big, like, Carl energy with this whole situation. And talking about it now, I'm like, yeah, the only difference was Carl told everyone he told her. Mm-hmm. That was the only difference Yeah, to me. I see no difference. <laughs> they are the mm-hmm. same picture. <laughs> oh, my God. Literally, um, it's like the... No, it's not. I was going to say it's like that one Spider-Man meme where they're just like... Oh, staring. I was thinking of the office meme with Pam. Is like, there's no difference in no, the picture. I know what you're talking about. Oh, okay, about. okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, but I was just annoyed. Oh, sorry. But, yeah. Sorry, you can... No, sorry. I just didn't know you were allowed to talk. Um, but I want to talk about... Um, because I think it is important to talk about... Um, Obviously, we are not impacted by this. Um, we are not women of color. But I really loved that Michelle brought up. Um, I don't Tell me if you have a better word for this, but it's kind of like, okay, I think this is better than what I was thinking, like racist profiling in the dating world. Um, how she was talking about how she can be seen with literally like any black man. And they'll I be. Think, wouldn't it be racial? Racial profiling. File. Profi- profiling, not but, racist. Well, or, I just mean by, like, other people, it seems. I, says, I okay, told you. Yeah. I, yeah. No, I just mean, like, um, yeah, racial profiling is better. I just could not figure out the word. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it was not connecting in my head this morning or last night. I was trying to figure it out. Um, but how she can be seen with, like, any black man, and they'll be automatically assumed a couple – but with, like, white men, like, it won't. And I feel like unless, like, that's so true. I feel like unless it's, like, so obvious that two people of other races are dating, like, they're holding hands, they're kissing in public, like, they're very obviously dating, people will just assume they're friends. And I just think, like, one, I think we should just not assume anyone's dating unless given evidence that they are. Mm-hmm. Um, That's just how I feel about everything, though, and I've always felt about that. But, like... I love that she's having those conversations. Yes, especially because for me, that's, like you said, we're not women of color, so we don't understand. So it's not something I would have originally thought about. And then It's not something we've experienced. It makes me so happy that she's bringing this up because it's something that we should be aware about and something that we need to remember because... A lot of times, even if you don't intend to, it can be, like, a subconscious thing. Yeah. And so, you know, I really respect her for bringing that up because I was just, I sat there and I was like, oh my god, like. This is a problem. Yeah. And it's so eye-opening to hear her speak on these things. And that's why we need diverse bachelorettes and bachelors. Yeah. Yeah. I I agree a like, thousand percent. Yeah, and I, you know, during Matt's season, despite how it ended, I learned a lot on there that I wouldn't have thought about, and it's so important to have these conversations, especially when you do have a big platform like The Bachelor. Yeah, I agree, and I can't, uh, like we've said, like we can't relate, but I can't imagine how eye-opening that could have been for so many other women of color, Mm -hmm. men of color, if if they were watching. I just feel like... Yeah, and it's like... Or like how seen they must have felt. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Like, for the individuals who are watching, you know, men and women of color, and they're like, yes, someone gets it. Or it could be even something that they didn't really think of. And then they're like... Oh my god, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I've never been able to put it in the words, but that is what it is. Mm-hmm. So, I just... Uh, it's amazing. I love her. I literally love her. And... I love that the producers are not cutting it out. Mm-hmm. Like, I appreciate that so much. Yes, I do too. And I think that it's really interesting too because this... Michelle's our third bachelorette, our third black bachelorette, and... So far on each of these seasons, we've heard different discussions, and 
I'm not sure about Rachel Lindsay's season, but I know Taisha didn't bring this up much. So, um, you know, I really love hearing Michelle talk about it. Yeah, I... Okay. This... I don't know how much this would have impacted, but I feel like since Chris Harrison has left, we've had a lot more of these conversations because we saw Ivan and Jacenia talk about it on Paradise. I know we saw more. It's just Paradise was so much. I know more people talked about it on mm-hmm. Paradise. Um, so I... It, I don't know that it's coincidence that we're having these conversations now. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know, but there's just been some changes, I think, in production and some changes. Like, they're still shitty. Like, it's a production. Yeah. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're making reality TV. They're, get, they're getting views. Yeah, they know what they're doing. The but... casting people know what they're doing to get the drama. <laughs> They did one good thing, right, and that was giving Michelle the opportunity to speak on topics like this and to really, you know, explain this to viewers like us. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like a lot of times I, like, wish I could understand more, so I'm very grateful for these moments that give me more to think about Mm -hmm. um yeah I don't know Mm -hmm. it was just like I have very high hopes for this season and I want to see more conversations like this I do too agreed and you know if if the men have anything too I'm like I want to hear you so yeah mm. just flawless yeah no notes Michelle (laughs) <laughs> she's handling herself so well um yeah. she well she did cancel yeah which i did make a little night. joke about earlier but yeah my, and it was frustrating on the end. i don't care that much about it to be honest i feel like she probably just felt like that was after nobody answered her right when she addressed mm-hmm. them i just feel like maybe she felt like oh you don't want to talk now like then you must have nothing else to say to me kind of mm-hmm. thing and like once that's in your head i could i probably would have done the same thing because like yeah because you would be in a bad you'd mood be in a mood and you just kind of want to be over it. and i'm sure it was already super late she's really tired yeah. yeah. And honestly, it would be hard for me to not already know who I was keeping. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Speaking, um, I want to say a little moment about, like, the men who left. Yeah. There was only four. So, we have the two firefighters, PJ and Daniel. Yes. PJ was the Carlton man, for those of you who do not know, because he did not get that much screen time. Yeah. Daniel was a Sagittarius, so, um, Bye. Oh, did they update it? We didn't have his last week. I didn't know he was a... uh, The first one said, like, did not know. Yeah, so he's a Sag. And then we... uh, Alec? Alec is gone. Um, We did not see, like, any of him. Who's the fourth guy? Um, Pardeep. (gasps) Pardeep! Um, Why did I still think he was there? Damn. I don't know. Probably because he didn't get much screen time either. But he was, um, I believe, the first Indian American on the show ever yeah he he made a tweet i saw a tweet saying he was the first one to ever get a rose and i was like i'm pretty sure he's the first one ever um so and i know you really liked him i didn't see enough of him to make up an opinion but i do love that he just looked like a friendly dude yeah like i would be friends with him despite him being a cancer <laughs> <laughs> um no so um not really sad like i'm sad to see people leave but like there was no relationships really developed yeah. there. And I'm excited that the cast is getting smaller because it gives us a chance to know certain men better. Yes. Last night, I definitely was like, this is so much more manageable, having them all kind of broken up into groups. Yes. And it's only going to get easier from here, I feel I'm like. I'm really proud of us, though, because I feel like I'm really remembering names. Yes. And just signs are getting easier. Um, besides... I almost said it. Besides Brandon, I keep wanting to call him Courtney. Oh, Brandon is a Leo. I kept forgetting Spencer. Oh, I thought you... Okay, you meant you were forgetting Brandon's name and calling him Courtney. I thought you meant you were forgetting his son. I was like, he's a Leo. Doesn't he look like Nemo? 
I know, and you keep pointing it out. <laughs> but, like, okay. Do you know care. what? No, okay. I'm okay with it. We're going to call him Nemo because he needs to be humbled. Because he, <laughs> he's got an ego. But, like, and not, I don't know. He could be more annoying, but he's not as annoying. The guy I kept forgetting was Spencer's name, even though I literally talked last week about how I liked him. We just didn't see him that much this mm-hmm. week. Um, I was so happy that Le- Leroy stayed because I want to see more of him, Leroy. and we didn't see any of him. Yeah. So I was happy when he stayed. He has such a nice smile. Yes, he really does. He it looks like he would treat someone so well. Yeah. Are we going to see more of LT ever? I think he gets a <laughs> one-on-one. I swear we've seen clips. I could definitely be wrong, but I thought I think he's going to stay for a while. I would be terrified to have him take me on a one-on-one because I would be convinced he was going to murder. <laughs> I agree. Literally. No, I agree. Like a thousand percent. Malik is so cute. Oh my god. And he stayed. Olu? He's so cute. I think oh, that, holy shit. I think Olu. Yeah, that's Olu. how that's how she said it. Okay, I couldn't remember how she said I it. I think but. Um, we're so sorry if we are wrong. We are trying to pay more attention to make sure that we are saying it correctly. So cute. He me. is so cute. Him and Michelle would be so cute together, and I can see her, him, and Michelle developing a really mature yes. Re- relationship. Yes. See, he is everything that. Um, what was his name? Hold on. Olu is everything that Brian wanted to be. Like, Olu is the dad that's, like, an incredible father, but, like, not boring. Like, like Brian. Olu is the fun dad. But, like, exactly. mature and respectable. Like, his his smile. Look at his smile. Oh, my God. Yeah. Obsessed. I agree, and um, I just love their conversation about, like, how he is quietly confident while we mm-hmm. hear Peter and Will yeah. screaming at each other. Which made me so sad, because I'm like, she... That's what we were later, focused on, was yeah. the yelling. And later on, she says that while she was talking to him, she could hear them yelling, so obviously she was distracted, too. Yeah, I was like, maybe it's just, like... They put the sound in the back. Maybe they wanted it to sound like that, but no, we see that she was hearing it. Yeah. Aw. Poor guy. I'm not skeptical about him. I love him. Yeah. I don't know him, but I love this man. Yeah. Unproblematic. <laughs> He's like my my quiet fave, I guess. Yeah. And I don't mean in the sense that, like, he's quiet. I mean, like... We just I haven't seen see, him. don't see, like... Yeah. We don't see him a lot, but every time he pops up, I'm like, yes. I think... I didn't write this down, but I'm going to write it down in case we need to refer to it. Um, I think he might get the next one-on-one. I'm so here for it. Bring it on. Yeah, I, that, I get strong vibes. I feel like Clayton could. I could see that, too. Yeah. Uh, we didn't see a lot of him this episode. Yeah, that's why I feel like we're going to see more of him soon, because I'm like, they're setting him up to be The Bachelor, so I'm just curious. I think... He's going to be involved in drama next week, and then the week after, he's going to get the one-on-one. I think he's going to get in drama on the group date, is what I mean, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I don't know. I I feel like we kind of talked about everything. Yeah. It was a good episode. It was. It was, like, refreshing after yes, the chaos so of Paradise. Refreshing. It was way easier to keep up with. I didn't... Last week with my notes, I felt so rushed. This week, I was just, like, writing down important stuff. But then I was like, eh, this isn't important. So, yeah. Yeah, like, last week, I had to go through and be like, okay, what was important? And then... It was scrambled. We were still a little scrambled, but I just think that's how we talk. Yes. Yeah, we're just a little chaotic, and when we think of something, we will forget if we don't say it. So hopefully that doesn't bother anybody, but we're fine. Yeah. We'll survive. I'm really excited for next week, though. I'm finally, like, seeing the potential in all of these men, because I feel like before the season, I was like, these all kind of are, like, I'm not seeing it with Michelle quite yet, and now I'm starting to, and it's really nice. Yeah, I'm seeing her have chemistry with a lot of them. I only like Jack. 
And then Alu. Alu, yeah, but I just don't see them ending up together. So he's like my one that I love, but I don't think she will. I think he could surprise us. Like, we already made our predictions for top three, but I think he could be one to surprise us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, maybe all of these men should just leave because maybe he wins. So. <laughs> yeah. But. No, I'm hoping vibes. we see more of Alu, Malik, Leroy. I want LT for the drama. But yeah. I just want, I'll, for some reason in my head, I feel like he should be a dance instructor. So I'm Wait, just ready isn't for him he, to teach me how to do this. Isn't splits. he like a yoga guru or something? Oh, maybe he is. I think oh. he's a yoga guru. Someone on the show is a yoga guru, and I think it's him. That's so cool. I think that's what funny. Yeah. 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 Well, that's pretty much yeah. it. Good it, was pre- it was such a good episode. It's one of the best ones we've had in a while, and... Our conversation got really deep, and I kind of wasn't, like, expecting it to go so intense, but I like it. Like, I liked where it went. Yeah. Yeah. I like the balance of, like, kind of the trashy drama, but, like, the seriousness, too. Yes. Those are the best episodes, I feel like. And, um, bless the two-hour episodes, because those three-hour ones are a snooze. (laughs) And I was getting a little annoyed with how often the commercials were. But also, it gave me time to, like, kind of process. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, I, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But, you know, hopefully next week is good, too. Hopefully we get some more drama, but better drama. Not just Peter. Except, I will say, um, one of the best lines in that episode <laughs> was about the, like, what do you have more to offer than a slice? Oh my god, everyone was like, I'm, I am spit my drink out. It was so funny. I was like... I know, because I was not like looking at the TV at the moment, and then I hear that, and I'm, my head whips up, and I'm like, Okay, oh but in regards to that, I was like, I know we saw him mention it like twice, but like, is there more we didn't see that he kept mentioning it? Oh, for sure, because I even wrote down in my notes, Peter stopped talking about pizza. So. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess I just like didn't really care. Yeah. So, yeah, but yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. And, um, yeah, yeah, well, in the show, yeah, (laughs) we'll have another episode Monday and we'll be back with more, um, Michelle season next Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Have a good day, Shaker Cube. Drink some caffeine. Bye. Bye.